far as sort of the order of how this is going to happen, we're going to start with Scott Brooks, our director. He's going to say a bit. And then we're going to get into the hoodies. Um, and I will announce each student individually. Uh, when I announce a student, please, the student, the corresponding advisor, come and stand on these two respective spots. Um, and then each advisor will have a brief bit of information to say and then do the hoodie. And then we'll just go back and cycle through in order of the students. And if there's time at the end, then also we, we broader statements to the group as well. So with that, Scott, if you want to come up here. So good morning. It's great to be here with you all. Great to be here with you faculty. You know, the, just very briefly, I was told that your undergraduate degree is for your parents. My master's degree, I was told, was for me, and then the PhD was for my family, like extended generation. Um, because when you have a PhD, all of the kids in your family get to look up and see you. It gives them something to aspire to. So this is an amazing accomplishment. It's life-changing, not only for you, but for those around you who have loved you. And it's been an honor and a privilege for us as your faculty to be here with you on this journey. So congratulations, enjoy this day. It's a momentous time, not only because of what's going on here, but of course what's going on in the world. You're going out as this world is reopening, right? And so it's a great time. All right, congratulations. And first up is Annabelle Atkins. Congratulations, Annabelle. Um, it's been a long trip. I interviewed Annabelle in South Korea online, and I thought I was getting a Korea, not a Korean American student, but we got Annabelle, and we were so lucky to have her. Um, she is a tremendous scholar. I'm so proud of her in terms of all of her accomplishments, but I think I'm more importantly, I'm so proud of the person that you've grown to be, continually do so. She's an amazing scholar who thinks about her community, about her lab, and so many others. I'm so proud of you. Welcome to the family. We love you. Each time you guys want to stand side by side just for a second for a photo, like a sort of a photograph with her hood. Perfect. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Next is Diana Galdado. Okay, I'm going to use my, what Natalie just called my cheerleader voice, so here it is. Um, I'm sorry I didn't write it down, Diana, because I have four, so I had to write down a few things. Diana completed her dissertation, which was titled White Parents, Colorblind Racial Ideology and Implicit White Preference as Predictors of Children's Racial Attitudes, and she completed last year. Um, and this is like a little bit more about Diana. Um, although Diana is not technically my firstborn, uh, I had a few PhD students before Diana, but there was a bit of a gap between those students and Diana. So Diana was my only child for a while. And like any parent, you develop a pretty special relationship with your only child. When I started what's known as Project Kid, which is our kindness project, Diana quickly became my right-hand human, and she moved forward in her graduate program. She became the most experienced. She was a data collection master. She understood how to collect EEG data, and I had no idea how to do that. Um, even the people who did EEG didn't know how to do it as well as Diana did. Um, she trained all of the graduate students, she trained the undergraduate students, and she became the person that I came to to turn to for expertise in all areas. She is a superstar when it comes to anything related to data, to substantive issues related to our project, and these days whenever one of my students has a question, the answer is generally, why don't you ask Diana? <laughs> to describe Diana, one word is colleague. 
She did go from my only child to developing into a full-fledged colleague who I consider more of a collaborator than a student. And just like any parent, she's taught me as much as I've taught her. On a personal level, I absolutely adore her and I'm excited for her next journey working with Indigo Cultural Center as Director of Evaluation and Research and onto her next journey into motherhood. Congratulations. And then if you could just pose for a second. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. Hold on. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> you really you really got me a lot of sorts here. All right. Okay, next up is Chandler Hilly. Hello. <laughs> so Chandler is one of those students, or Dr. Hilly is one of those students who came in knowing exactly what he wanted to do. And so he really innov innovatively combined his past experience with college students and college students' health with his experience with the social determinants of education as an academic advisor to develop this portfolio of research supporting adolescents as they transition to adulthood. And so in order to do that, he had to cobble together people um, who had some sort of expertise, so both from our school, from the college, and even from outside of the college to make it happen. And so he said it was a good thing that he knew what he wanted to do, and that's because a, that was challenging, but B, Chandler is so talented, he could have gone in multiple different directions. So for those of you who know Chandler, you know that he is a statistical whiz, both in terms of understanding the content, and he has his methodological and statistical analysis specialization, but also in teaching others about statistics, for which he got the Graduate Student Teaching Award. So if all of that wasn't enough, it doesn't really sum up Chandler and his contribution to the school, his current contribution here still at ASU, and his future contribution. And that's because anyone who has ever worked with Chandler knows that he's deeply passionate about supporting people and about doing it in partnership with others. And what's particularly powerful about that is that he brings that passion He's able to listen and he's just a tremendous dependable colleague and so it's for all of those reasons that I'm thrilled to be here today and to congratulate the new Dr. Hilly. Well, I guess he's in the back of the room. Yeah. 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 her genuineness, and her commitment to community building. Michelle, for six years, has made my place of work a community. She's made it a wonderful place to work, to think, and to collaborate every single day. As Michelle moves forward, I'll be able to continue to access her work and her scholarship as she continues to produce it. But I will deeply miss 
what it's like to share a social and intellectual daily community with Dr. Pasco. Thank you, your work, and you have been a gift to me in my work, and congratulations.
since that point has become an expert in the topic. She combined all of this work with her interest in pro-social behavior, and she developed a really exciting dissertation project where she collected her data and completed the whole project from start to finish. And keep in mind, she's only been here three years, um, and she accomplished all that. She had a timeline, and no global pandemic was going to get in the way of that. During the first months of the pandemic, while lockdown forced many people to redecorate our homes or learn to crochet, Ashley got special permission to come to campus to work. And I remember her telling me that she would sneak out of the house so her kiddos didn't see her, so she could come to campus to work. And she completed her comps that way, not in the allotted three months, but in one month. That's just an example of her determination. I'm so pleased that Ashley is ready to start her next adventure as an assistant professor in the Family Studies Department at BYU. If her past is any indication of her future success, there is no question that Ashley will continue to make us proud as a leader in the field, studying hope, studying civic engagement, and pro-social development. Congratulations, Ashley. student that I mentor and all, all the things I'm proud of uh, that you have accomplished um, perhaps the thing that blows me my, blows me away the most is that you completed a wonderful dissertation during a pandemic and with a newborn right and being an attentive father yeah. I'm so proud of the work we have done together I've learned perhaps more from you and with you that you from me and with me. I cannot wait to see what you do next. Congratulations on the course. from her 
her experiences, her knowledge, and especially her persistence. Congratulations. All right, we're gonna, you don't have to bend down. <laughs> Annabella Sarama Gallagher. Congratulations. I still remember reading your application and the letter your undergraduate advisor wrote for you. And, um, and life came for a full circle when I sat with her and had dinner with her at your wedding and we got to talk about um, how grateful I was that she sent you to us. Um, so I was really excited your second year when you decided to be a civil person <laughs> and join me. And within one year, you had a master's thesis completed and off for publication. And you've never stopped. Um, I especially don't know how I would have survived the last several years of the Civs project without you, because you jumped in and you did anything and everything. You wrote a whole curriculum in, I think, a month's time. Um, you designed everything to be better. You problem solved everything. Um, you've always been like a colleague and not a student. I feel like you've been a partner in everything we've done. Um, it's been wonderful to see you grow. You've worked harder than anyone I know. Um, and persisted through everything and managed to get married and have a baby and defend a dissertation <laughs> all within about 13 months. So congratulations. to me is that she was able to just a little bit into the program design her own study go all the way back to China and collect data on her own this is no easy feat and she got funding to do that by herself um, so that really showcases her independence and uh, the likelihood that she's going to be successful as an independent scholar um, she's definitely one of the hardest working students I've ever mentored um, you know, some of the comments that I heard earlier about others really resonate with me, and I could have said the same about you, and I will, that, you know, every time I gave you something, it was right back to me. Um, so, so good at incorporating feedback, too, and that's a huge skill that we underrate in life, that's going to take you really far. Um, she worked with some of the most complicated data sets I've ever encountered, uh, multi-country, multi-level, longitudinal, um, and she just did it. Um, it wasn't easy, but she did. And now um, she's she's better for it, even though I think it was probably not one of her favorite things to do. Um, she Another thing that sets her apart is all of her international work. We're so egocentric here, and she's worried about the kids all over the globe, which I think is uh, very important and is going to be a huge asset in your work. Um, she uh, did her dissertation very quickly, did crazy models with, again, crazy data, random intercept cross-leg panel models that can get closer at causality. Another thing that we need to do better is developmentalists, and she's just doing it already. Um, so I'm so proud of you. And she's gonna be starting her postdoc at University of Alberta uh, with Dr. Jang in a couple of months. And I know you're gonna be very successful in that. Um, personally, she's a ray of sunshine. She's got empathy. She's got a positive attitude that's unparalleled. And I'm really gonna miss you. Be 
So just one final congrats to all of our graduates. And I just want to say one sort of brief piece of, I don't know if it's wisdom, but it's, it's my perspective. And it sort of taps off a bit what um, Tracy was talking about, sort of the generational component to sort of trainers and trainees, mentors and trainees. I'm sort of at the mid-career of my sort of academic trajectory, and several of the people that I mentored under have now retired. And sort of sort of more cognizant of the fact that their contribution, their voice, their science still flows through me. And you guys are going to go on from here to establish your own legacy and train other students or other research assistants to add to your legacy. But all of that will add to the legacy of all your mentors and the legacy of the folks that mentored them. And it's really this dream that we just step into a little bit and then we step out. But that's how our science builds. That's how we make a difference. That's how we impact families, health, understanding, make a better, more equal, equitable society. Um, and so go on. Congrats. You guys are all well positioned because you also will add to the legacy of our program, the Family Human Development Program, for training fantastic students. And so I'm excited for you guys to all go on and sort of start your journeys. But just be mindful that it's building off of the journeys of others, building off the journeys of others. And it's part of this sort of fraternity that you're now a part of. And it's exciting, it's important. And I look forward to reading all of the fantastic contributions you guys make to the field. Congrats again. And I think that officially ends our ceremony because we're a little bit over. But obviously, people are free to sort of stay and talk.